Okay. Um, the Willington Conservation Commission special meeting is going to start at 7.03. And roll call, we have Peter Anderson, Bob Shabbat, Carol Jordan, Marilyn Schreiber, Kathy Demers. So the only item on our agenda today is to discuss the American Rescue Plan Act, also known as ARPA, to decide what the Wellington Conservation Commission will be putting in for funding requests. So we're not gonna discuss any other items tonight. If there's any other issues, um, they'll come up in our, at our April meeting. Okay, but the things that are on to the table tonight would be anything that we could potentially get some funding for. So why don't yeah. we open the meeting up by having people, um, let's brainstorm a little bit, and maybe uh, make some suggestions of potential funding requests. Um, Kathy, I think we that might extend also to talk, talking about alternate funding because and whether it would be best to ask for funds from ARPA or to use our budgetary funds. Uh, I think that would would not be go beyond the scope of the meeting if we're talking about you know funding with ARPA as opposed to funding from other sources. I think that would fall within the limits of this meeting, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that we can discuss whether or not it would be something that would go under ARPA or that we would discuss in the April 20th meeting regarding funding from our regular budget. Is that what you're saying, Carol? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, you know, uh, because it, it, you know, we have other funding sources and we might want to be able to, to, um, to do that. And also, we have quite a bit of money left in, in the current operating budget. And if we're going in for ARPA, I think we want to be able to show that we have. We are spending most of the money that was given to us for budgetary purposes. So, mm -hmm. just good point. All right, okay. all right. Does anybody have some things that they'd like to throw out for brainstorming? Well, I already threw mine out because I sent it out to an email to everybody. I had difficulties. I think Patty Phillips got it. I kept getting bounces on her email, and then I realized that I hadn't put enough zeros in front of, I believe the digit was a five. And I don't think it came back as a bounce after that, but I'm not positive. But I, I know that um, everybody, I think everybody else got the email on the brush cutter. Uh, I think, as I said at the other meeting, that that would be a good purchase. I mean, if we don't wanna use ARPA funds, I really think that we should consider uh, purchasing it because there's so many areas beyond where the, uh, you know, that big field is behind where we have the, the, the uh, benches that look over Taylor Pond. That area is so well used that it would be nice if it could go back to being that beautiful meadow with, that was there with the machine, either like the one that was, was maybe just an explanatory, maybe the one that we suggest that Dave and I suggest it is not big enough, but it's the concept of owning something like that, that you push, it's small enough to get over the bridge and it will make that area maintain a meadow-like appearance, which I think that was really um, a nice feature back there. Alan, um, I can't remember what the uh, estimated cost of that was. I can bring it up on my phone. I wanna say off the top of my head that it was 699, but um, I'll look it up for you. Okay. Dave just said that's about right, six ninety nine. Called oh, seven hundred. And did did that include an extra uh, cutter blade, or is it just just? I'll, I'll have to look. It, I'll, I'll look it back up for you, uh, Carol. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't. I... Yep. Well, yeah, it would be nice to have it at our beck and call, but it also means someone's got to store it, keep it, maintain it. And that can maybe be a nuisance for somebody that may not be available to the commission for very long or um, they can be rented. I mean, it would cost more money to rent them. I know a Home Depot rents a, a walk behind uh, Brush Hog is another option. I've seen one of those in there and I did some quick looking on, on the interweb and uh, you know, I, 
not sure what the daily I saw there was seven hundred dollars for a week or something. We wouldn't need it for a week, but if one could rent it for a day or a couple of days and make good use of it for a couple of days for you know a couple of hundred bucks or something, that might be a better way to go and it would be likely to be a fairly heavy duty machine. Um, it occurred to me also that that we might be able to store it um, at public works since it you know it can be used for town purposes um, and and we might be able to use town for uh, for fuel as well um, if we if we own the equipment so it wouldn't necessarily uh, we could look into the option of having it sound up to, stored on town premises rather than someone having it in there have to be responsible for it in their home. Yeah. We might also want to just double check to see if Public Works actually owns some kind of um, equipment that's similar. I don't know if they do, um, but uh, yeah. that's yeah. yeah. This one is twenty-two inches wide. Mm -hmm. That yeah. was the that was the feature that led it, Dave, to it because it would go over the bridge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's I, I think that's an important consideration. So, you know, I think it's worth looking into whether you know whether we can cooperation from the town in terms of storing and perhaps fueling um and, and but have something that's sized for us i suspect if they have a brush cutter it's probably larger than that because they don't have the same restrictions we have in terms of of access to where we need it yeah, yeah i would good. think that would be a fairly mickey mouse size for the town uh, <laughs> yes so uh, and the engine is a Brig Briggs and Stratton, and 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 that's still a reliable company. That still has the quality that that they used to have as well, mm -hmm. right? Briggs and Stratton is still a big name and and yeah, smaller. Still, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And it is sixty. Right now it's on sale. It's usually seven ninety nine, and right now it's six ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, they're shipping in here. Oh, free shipping. Ooh. Yeah. And What's you can get it with electric start instead of manual for a hundred dollars more. Yeah, with a battery that you have to extra weight. But yeah, um, what's the brand on this? Just a moment. Dr. Dr. Oh, it's DR. a Dr. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. And that has a blade on the front of it too, or you just buy, it's an option. Oh, blade or string. It blade or string comes with string, but you can get the blades um, as an option. I, I didn't see on the website what the additional cost was for blades. Okay. And there's other but models. We, but would we would want blade? We would probably want blade, wouldn't we? Yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah that's then, what I would think. For $100 more, you can get a self-propelled one. I did. Uh, call the rental place in Tolland on Route 44. They have rental equipment. And I did speak to somebody this morning who said they do have a brush cutter there um, that they rent out for $75 a day. And they do put one tank of gas in it. You, they like you to come have it come back with some gas in it. Um, but you know they take care of all the maintenance and all that too. I mean, that's another option is to rent something like that. Pete also mentioned the brush hog, which is probably a little larger, um, you know, rented for a day or two, and we'd have the two meadows um, and maybe the Taylor home site that we might want to use it around. Right. Oh, I don't have my heart set on it. It was kind of huh. like we, we decided to just pick one that looked good so that the conversation could start and you could look at it and get a visual and get other ideas and it looks like that's what it did that's good that it's it might it i understand the idea of renting i get i think it's a, a wise as long as there's somebody on the commission who owns a truck and can go pick it up and has ramps that can take it off the back of the vehicle so those are added pieces that have to be added into the equation is is, is there someone on the commission who has a truck and is willing to take the chances of some beating up of the bed of the truck by having that in there and securing it in there properly. You know, all those ifs, ands, and buts. Mm -hmm. That's why I was you're thinking. Not, you're not a real truck owner if you're gonna be that uh, concerned <laughs> about the bed of your pickup. But you still have to secure it back there somehow. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, yeah. Guess, I guess that's why I was thinking if by any chance we could could store it in the town facility, we could just ask them to drop it off at, at the park. 
you know, they have the proper equipment to transport it uh, mm -hmm. when, when we wanted to use it and, and uh, return it. I, I mean, after my, all, that, that would not be- my mind too. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. anyway, that's a thought. All um, right. I'll, I'll, I let's put our let's put our hand out, uh, put it down on the ARPA request and see what happens. Thousand well, dollars. So make a motion, Pete. Thousand. I make a motion that um, conservation commission includes, I don't know, nine hundred dollars in its request for maintenance of uh, town open space. For brush hog for. For brush cutter. Well, this is referred oh, to brush, if brush you're going to purchase this one, it's referred to as a trimmer mower. But if you're going to get a brush cutter, that's fine too. Let's call it a brush cutter. Okay. Sounds this better. Has brush, Dave says this has a brush cutter attachment. Yeah. But is it included in the price, Marilyn? Or is uh, that? The way I let read me, it, I let me let me ask Dave. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, Kathy, when do we have to have the exact figures? Because I think we might want to put this together into a couple, some maybe one or more packages for things that would include perhaps equipment and you know signage or whatever um, for so that we have general categories and we could support it with information for specific items to be included in a in a package. Um, so. My experience when do we need from, to know? Well, we, the sooner we get our requests in, probably the better chances we have of having these approved because they've already expended over half of the $1.7 million and they still have requests um, coming in. So it may not take long. My Dave is looking up the details as we speak. Okay, thanks, Marilyn. So looking at the way that other commissions and boards have submitted their ARPA requests, they have done it in more of a singular fashion for each item. Okay. For example, the fire department requested radios as one item, and then they also requested a, um, Scott air packs as another item. Mm -hmm. So they didn't bundle it all. They, everything was you know, a line item, um, a separate request. So I would suggest we do the same. Um, you know, for example, if we had any other equipment, we, we could, could maybe put it together as Carol's yeah. mentioning, right. but you probably wouldn't want to put this together with the bridges and uh, boardwalk uh, construction materials. That might be a separate item. Yep, Bob. I would suggest that if we're going to buy something like that, it's uh, we we get something that's self-propelled. I've walked behind a sickle bar mower, and you don't want to be pushing that those things. You want it to pull you along and just adjust the speed accordingly. Right, and I believe that the one that Marilyn had uh, sent around for people to look at um, is self-propelled. Um, Chris and I have a DR brush trimmer like this up in Vermont, and boy, it pulls you along. <laughs> Yeah, you feel like you're going for a, a real ride sometimes. <clears throat> yeah, the society the society has a, a sickle bar on a uh, on a mower, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's got cleated tires, so it starts going. It it does move, but you once you get to know how it's operating, you know it's pretty easy to control. Yeah, I think this might be well received because of the, the problems that they have with shortage of staff uh, and, and shortage of staff and other and other resources at uh, DPW that if, you know, if we were to, to have this piece of equipment, so it would be something that we would be within our capabilities that might be a good argument in favor of, of our purchasing something like this. Um, Bob, I just have a question for you. The sickle bar mower, is that something that could be used um, at, at the Fenton Park? Yeah, and small stuff you can't go into, you know, not much bigger than pencil size stuff. Because oh, okay. then you start breaking the uh, teeth and you got to stop it. You got to pull everything apart and replace the teeth. They're those triangular shaped teeth that they use for hay mowers. They used to use for mowing uh, hay for farming. Okay. That's what well, this nothing is. Nothing bigger than a pencil? 
because right. the, the DR trimmers, they say a half inch, which may be a little bit less than your thumb. Right, yeah, yeah. That's gotta be, you know, it's gotta be pretty heavy duty to be able to do that. And, and those, bl the, those blades have to be turning at a good clip to be able to chew through that. Right, Where, so like a brush hog is usually something you can use on heavier um, right. things. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Marilyn, did you? I don't know, Dave, I, have you found the details on that, Dave? Yeah, He's I, working I'll, on it. Okay. Yeah, how about if we just sort of go through some stuff and, and leave the, the exact dollar amounts for the moment and we can come back to things because some, <laughs> some things there are, are, are options. Um, do you want me to talk about the, the uh, pedestrian crossing signs, Kat? Yeah, you can go ahead, Carol. Yeah, one thing we've talked about was doing um, pedestrian crossing signs on Mason Road uh, up where the parking lot is and also where the Nip Up Trail crosses. And I did look into the... Um, there's a, a comp uh, on Amazon, um, what seemed to be the, a fairly decent price was a company called Smart Sign. Um, but I, what I, the information I sent out, um, I think I've changed my mind because I did, we went around last sort of looking at road signs and it turns out they, although they have them in 12 by 18, they, that might not, it might be preferable to use 18 by 24 inch and the one, that I thought would be nice would be one that has slow and big letters and then stick figures of an adult and a child kind of, and then at the bottom pedestrian crossing because you have the big slow and the, and the graphic is what will catch people's eye. They're the, you know, the classic uh, reflective bright yellow um, metal aluminum signs. They come um, pre-drilled with posting for holes um, and, they also, we could also get the, the green steel enamel steel posts. Um, and those, um, those you, you, watch, you uh, put the post into the ground a foot and a half, and that allows you to mount the, the bottom of the sign five feet above ground level. So it goes up from there. Um, and they, but they also come with, with uh, you can get uh, attachment kits to put them on the, the pot. So this would be sort of standard uh, road sign kinds of things. And we would need four signs, one for each direction at each cross. And so if we went with the 18 by 24, it would be the cost, assuming that, that things, things don't change, because this is Amazon. So, you, you know, we, we can't, we probably should put in some, you know, a little bit of flexibility because you know, we don't, we're, I'm assuming we can get uh, the, the free shipping would apply to the posts and, and, and other things as well as the signs. And that would bring the total cost, um, well, 335.22. So we probably want to round that up some and need to, to verify that all of that would, could be shipped um, uh, free. And we would order through the town to avoid having sales tax. And actually that's something we should do with a brush hog as well as make sure that we could order that through the town to be billed to, to what the appropriate funding source um, rather than have it have, you know, be reimbursed, not do it on a reimbursement basis. So I don't know what people think, think before, about that. And I, I did check with Troy just to find out about um, metal poles. And he does say, uh, say that he has several sizes and that, that Public Works could provide those to us. So oh, okay. we might be able you know, to avoid that cost. Um, I would like to say just in terms of size, I, I'd like to suggest we think of something smaller. Um, actually, I drove up and down Mason Road today <laughs> and, and I had to go to the lab. So I was on Route 44 and I was trying to pay attention to signs as I went by and I realized that there's a, that several large signs like bus uh, stopping signs um, on the side that don't pay attention to at all. Um, so I'm, and the speeds on Mason Road, actually, I was trying to push it a little bit and I was going 25 miles an hour and I was bumping all over the place. So I doubt that people are gonna be going more than 25 miles an hour on that road in general. I don't know. <laughs> so, well, try, try it. Just, just try it one of these days. I was surprised. I mean, I was less than 25 and with all the potholes, I was really having a hard time. 
<laughs> I know one selectman's meeting where they were talking about Mason Road, they were talking about, about having problems with speeding um, because of uh, people cutting through from the apartment, using that as a cut through to get to Yukon uh, from, from some of the apartments. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I think uh, it also depends somewhat on you know, the condition of the, of the road at, at different times. I have no problem with going with a slightly smaller sign. Um, but Dave, Dave did go me and measure like the, the um, speed limit sign uh, on uh, Penny Hill Road, and that turned out to be 18 by 24. Um, the seven, the eight, eight, uh, 12 by 18 is fairly small. However, it would be a bright color. And so that would serve to be attention getting. So I, I'm just, I'm not arguing particularly for any particular item, but I, but that is something that we thought um, particularly because of um, we are getting hopefully more people to be using the parks and with the and with the parking lot available and the trails on the opposite side and as well as the trail crossing uh, for the Nipmuc, it probably would be a good thing to provide extra safety and um, Bob, whatever is the cost. Thank you, Carol. Bob, you had your hand up. Uh, why don't we consider uh talking with signs of all kinds and having a custom, uh, some custom trail uh, signs made up that says uh, trail crossing? Um, the, the thing, I, the, the reason I think it's probably better to go with this is, is that these, these signs are designed for long-term use in the out of doors. And they, one of the things that this particular sign has is um, they have, oh, it's, it's, um, uh, what is it? I'm sorry. I, I'm tired tonight. It's, it has, uh, um, film on it to, so that, that it protects the surface and, um, and you can wash off graffiti and things of that kind. So they're, they're designed specifically for that purpose. Um, if we could use posts for the town, the posts are one of the more, uh, expensive features. I don't have any particular, um, uh, preference for, uh, size of sign, I'd be willing to go with lower because it's a, it's a low signage area and I think they would stick out anyway. I, I would vote against putting any signs out there. <clears throat> First of all, I don't see much reason for it. The speeds on the road are very low. And, uh, you know, it's a rough road, as Kathy said. Second of all, anyone on a trail crossing the road, given the roughness of the road, we'll hear a car coming um, from many hundreds of yards in each direction. So in terms of someone walking out in the road and not being aware of the, of the cars out there is, is extremely small unless they're totally in la la land. Well, and, that... and reasons, excuse me, Carol, I still have yeah, a okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pete, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, and um, probably most of all, no one driving down a rural country lane needs to see some uh, very large, um, ugly yellow sign hanging on a post there to despoil the rural countryside. So that together with the fact that, that I think there's very, very, very little reason to put them out there and the fact that they're ugly out there in the woods, <clears throat> I would vote against any sign at all. Yeah, actually, just to clarify, Pete, this was not my idea. This was an idea that was brought up in conjunction with with uh, the emphasis for the by the state for safety issues as as far as parking and and uh, road safety goes. Um, that I believe was brought up by Kathy. So I'm not pushing this. I was just gathering information on possible solutions to well, that. Well, I'm just giving an opinion on it. Yeah, I'm, okay, but I'm just saying I'm not pushing it. So I just, I'm just. Where'd you, Carol? It's not your, it's not your baby. Okay. It's Where'd not you, necessarily okay. my baby. I just gathered information because I thought there was some interest in doing this, but I'm not wedded to it. So just so that we clarify that. Um, but the the other option would be to think about, and I'm sure some of you have seen them as well. Um, there are signs that you can put up that just, they, they're not even bright. They might be a brown sign that says, uh, that shows a hiker and it just shows like where there's a crossing. Right. Um, and it might do two things. One, it might make motorists aware that somebody may be coming across. And two, when people are using the road, 
they'll be aware just in general, gee, there's trails down here. This might be an interesting place to come back and take a hike. Yeah, I think there are hiker, hiker signs. We could look into something like that that might have a, a, just a white background. I'm just, I'm just saying uh, this is, these are some options. And, um, and if we wanted to include it in a package, I'm not necessarily advocating for anything particular. I think Bob, that's kind of what Bob was suggesting, just a trail crossing sign. Uh -huh. That would be more to inform, um, I think maybe, as Kathy said, include some people in that there's a trail there, but number two, someone looking for the trail might include them in that, that that's where the trail is. But in terms of, of traffic and drivers, I don't think it'll do much. Yeah, well, just a couple things, Pete. Uh, when Kath, Kathy mentioned the other day when we were out there that somebody had come down the, the road pretty fast. Another thing is um, that we want to encourage families to use our trails. And trust me, you cannot trust a two-year-old or a three-year-old or a four-year-old not to just take off. And, you know, so to, it, it's, it, there is safety concerns from both the driver's perspective and the pedestrian perspective. So you can't rely. Um, and certainly this day and age, if you've ever walked, driven around the Yukon campus, there is not a, a young adult or a teenager who does not cross the road with their eyes looking down at a device. So it, there, I think there is some concern, but I'm not necessarily pushing this just so you know. Like I said, you'd have to be in La La Land and go walking across the road, hearing a car coming from both directions a quarter mile away and just wander around in the street. Peter, so, what I'm saying, not, in not my really experience, okay. <laughs> most okay, people are in La La Land. <laughs> so okay. so I would, I, I'd like to make a motion, first of all, that we we table this and put it um, on, on another meeting because I think whatever we decide, if we decide to buy some type of signage, we can buy it with our current funds, our budget. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we have some time to look into it more. Maybe people can look online. Um, Bob, maybe you could even check with um, signs of all kinds and just find out if they have aluminum signs. Or maybe they've made something in the past for trails. It's, they it's work on everything from metal to stone. Okay. So, you know, it's something we could explore and maybe come up yes. with something that kind of meets some of the goals that we're talking about a little bit on the safety side, just acknowledges to motorists, hey, you know, somebody might be crossing here. And then also it makes the public aware that there are trails that they can use as they're driving down that road. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's my motion that we just table this item. Uh, Fine. 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 Second your motion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so move. Marilyn, who's that handsome devil sitting next to you? <laughs> well, that, Dave, is, Dave is ready to answer questions Hi, about, Bob. about the DR trimmer because he's got it up on his computer. Okay. okay. What you want there? The one that I gave you the um, the uh, URL for mm -hmm. it comes. If you want to put electric start on it, you can. It's a hundred dollars more. Mm -hmm. If you want to uh, buy blades for it, you can. It sell. They sell two kinds of brush blades for it. One of them has got a sort of a, the outside edge of a disc is like a chainsaw chain. Mm. And the other one has got a, a disc. Yeah, that one. The other one has got a disc about uh, three inches in diameter with three uh, pivoting flails on it. And they say it'll, that's this one. Oh, okay. And they say it'll cut up to three eighths of an inch thick brush. But I'm sure that if you went into it slow, you could do more than that. Mm -hmm. That one cuts yeah. three inches Dave, in diameter. Excuse me, Dave, do they charge extra for those uh, those blades? Do you have any? Yes, prices? of course. <laughs> oh, of course. Do you have an idea of how much? Um, well, that would be that's a different page. I didn't I didn't go there because just a general idea. Are we talking another hundred dollars? No, it'll yeah, for the two blades, probably it's around a hundred. Okay. So he can keep looking that up and you we, we can segue back to them again if you want to. Okay. Are there right. any other items that people wanted to bring up 
tonight that we put in an ARPA request for? Are, are we not interested in doing the Taylor Pond Bridge? Is that is that more than we want to bite off? Peter, do you want to speak to that? Because we looked at it. Yeah, we looked okay. at it. Um, <laughs> Kathy and I were out there the other day, and actually the underpinnings look pretty good to us. What okay. What's decaying is the railing. The, the shoe at the bottom of the railing and some of the balusters and maybe the rail. Uh, but, you know, I got down and, and looked underneath and the underside of the, of the, uh, the treads looked solid. And, uh, you know, and poking around on the surface, it looked like they, they would be, uh, they'd be good for some while yet, <clears throat> I think. So the replacement of the, of the railing probably is in order. <clears throat> Those aren't the original railings, the original ones, um, were a pressure treated, small pressure treated, uh, just square posts. And I forget whether the tops and bottoms were pressure treated or not, but that was vandalized. And a good number of those were all kicked out. Um, so Bob Bittner, I, Bob Bittner and I rebuilt that, that whole, uh, that whole bridge 38 feet long with eight zillion balusters there and a lot of spikes. Um, so that, that could use replacement, but I think the bridge, is solid. You know, the the bridge will need replacement sometime. That that would be a, that would be a major major undertaking for that. That would be beyond the conservation commission. I mean, I don't know how they did it to start with. I mean, those are major uh, utility pole uh, posts sunk uh, deeply into the into the those bankings at an angle on both sides. And I think Joe Philippi said they're embedded in concrete. Um, so that that was quite the project. So um, the basics, I think, are still solid on it. Marilyn, was what part of the bridge were you concerned about when you mentioned it? Was it the surface? Well, we were standing on the bridge looking over the side, just looking at the water. And then I looked down at the area that Pete just described, which is where the ballot, the, the uh, what yeah, do you the call rails. it? Ba the rails. The rails. Sets yeah. yeah, sets into the board that sits on the bridge, that looked pretty bad. Yeah. And that's what you just that's, that's described. Rotten. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm really glad you looked underneath and you found that those boards are, are in good shape because that's a, that's a big relief to know that that part is still sturdy and strong. Yeah, a couple of years ago, I stuck a screwdriver or something down into the soil around those posts in the banking to see um, to see if they were solid. They appeared to be so at the time, but uh, that, that maybe could be checked again if I remember to bring a sharp implement out there to, to dig in, dig down a little bit and poke down low and see if they're, they're still solid. You know, we, we I, think I did a rough estimate, I think on, or I'm about to do a rough estimate on the replacement of that, that railing though, and for whatever, whether it's our or whether it's just our funds at, at some point in the near future. Okay. So, um, Peter, mm -hmm. the thing is tonight, I mean, we can always discuss ARPA funds again at our at the meeting that we're having on April 20th. But if we want to put in something before then to ARPA, we'd have to make decisions tonight. So. Um, I mean, we can put in requests at any time, just so you know, when, if there's still money left, even if it's six months from now. I just think that um, a lot of the money is going to be expended pretty quickly. So um, any other items that people wanted to bring up tonight? Yeah, Kathy, you'd gotten a bid from Conwood for the, for the um, um, doing, redoing the uh, Park, park maintenance management plan, the forest and management plan for Knowlton and Talmadge. The Beaver uh, Blade? Yeah. You said it was $50. No, the other one was $50. The flail blades. Do you want to speak to that, Kathy? Or, or, sure. Um, well, you know, I was, um, I thought maybe you wanted to bring it up, Carol, because it was your suggestion originally to um, see if we could get some ARPA funds to do our forest management plan update. The uh, current Knowlton Talmadge plan is only good to the end of this year. And 
we would, when we do the new one, we'd want to incorporate the new Talmadge property as well. So that, that additional 16 acres. So the total acreage, if you add up the current Talmadge, the Knowlton and the new property, there would be 182 acres. And I did query Conwood this week to find out what a new plan would cost an update and they uh, gave us a quote of $2,800. So I believe that we could potentially put this in as an ARPA request. Um, it, it fits in my mind anyway, under one of the categories, which is to invest in uh, water and water and sewer from the fact that it is, if we, we can make an argument that you don't a healthy, it. resilient forest mm -hmm. is important for stormwater management, and especially in our drinking water watershed, <laughs> we're also contributing yeah. to water quality by having a healthy, care. resilient forest. And that's really the purpose of a forest management plan is to, you know, help us to that's make sure purpose. that we're doing whatever it takes to keep it to be a healthy forest. And, and, and they also, if you look at the ARPA site, um, the parks and, and recreation are, are very important and they put a lot of emphasis on parks and recreational opportunities. And part of this, you know, addresses keeping the forest healthy and um, advising on, uh, but also on um, possible additional trail development and things of that kind. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think it definitely falls under uh, uh, ARPA and would, would allow us to uh, avoid having to go to other sources. Um, just generally, um, so people know where we stand, at the moment, we have less than $6,000 in park and recreation fund. And that's been our primary source for for getting the doing the forest management type of stuff, and um, and there there really are no no funding sources. So when that money's gone, it's gone, and that fund will go out of existence. Um, and as far as open space goes, there's about seventy four thousand, but sixty thousand of that is encumbered for the Talmadge purchase uh, associated expenses, and um, so there's like. 14,000 unless we go back. So I think we could, um, it would be nice if we could avoid having to dip into any of those resources to, since we're due to, to re-up the plan anyway, um, we could argue that on, uh, as a legitimate expense under ARPA. Any other comments? Well, yeah, well, let's do that. So we put in a yeah. number here and uh, make a motion to add that to the, uh... Replaced. Yeah, well, I'd like to move. So moved. We, we, well, I'd like to move that we request $2,800 from the ARPA funds to pay for a forest management plan done by, well, we can just say forest management plan. We don't have to say specifically Conwood. So, um, so I move that we request $2,800 from the ARPA funds for a forest management plan for the Knowlton and Talmadge properties. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Any discussion, any further discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so moved. Thank you guys. So that's okay. one request taken off the table. There we go. Kathy, just a question: um, are, are the ARP are the, does it, are the ARPA funds in hand? So, because um, if if this were approved, there they would be asking there would be a, a deposit required. So, I just wanted to know if the funds are are available. No, my understanding is they've already spent the first allotment that um, the town has gotten, and they won't get another allotment till July first for the second half. Okay. So if they're approved, they won't be available to us until uh, after July. Okay, that makes sense. And, and, and our uh, the uh, the uh, report was uh, was dated October of 2012. So it you know we would we wouldn't want to. So we would have to to we would just have to discuss with with um, with the vendor to make sure that that we could handle the cash flow on that. Okay, so my understanding from um, 
Conwood, Conwood that basically this bid is kind of open for this year. Okay. So we could do it later in the year. Mm -hmm. um, we could start it. They could start the field work. And at that time, once we get approved, my understanding is that we'd have access to the full 2800 So we should be able to pay the deposit out of that. Okay, so it sounds good. I just wanted to make sure we... I clarified that. Did we mention in the request that the plan, current plan is expiring and when? Not like. I, it... I can, what I can do, Peter, is um, when I put the request in, I can put some additional information about that. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. It, I, I don't think it has to be in our motion, but I definitely. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not filling out the application. We're just enabling you to put that. Information that request it and the of not being right. yeah yeah and at the end you guys want to think about authorizing me to go ahead and minutes. you know fill out the applications I can we can the plays are one hundred and seventy plus you're authorized <laughs> all right so anything else that people well getting do? close this webs you know how some websites you have to pan through like a million pages to get all the details. It looks like the machine itself is $800, is $800 if it's electric start. $800 if it's electric start. And $700 if it's manual start. And you don't have to worry about batteries, et cetera, then. Mm -hmm. And that's $170 for the um, um, little brush blade that'll cut through trees up to about three inches in diameter. And then it's uh, another $50 for the one that br cuts brush up to three eighths of an inch in diameter. And, and some of that is free shipping and some of it isn't. It's, it's, hard it's, to, yeah, it's hard to suss through it until you probably order. So it might be one of those deals where we go back to the, whoever is making the final decision, go in and add up all of those individual items to come up with a number instead of doing it in a rush at this moment because the website is some websites are easier to come up with a total than others so um how specific do we need to be in, in the opera request it, you know down I to mean, the yeah it doesn't have to be so. exact dollars that i understand especially for something with with a small amount that we're talking about. So let's okay. say we put in a thousand dollars for the request to cover those. Yeah, that um, would easily cover. And you know, that would cover shipping. And even if if some of it wasn't a hundred percent covered by the ARPA funds, we still have some money in our budget. We could buy the blades separately later. Correct. Those kinds of things. So yeah. and, and we do we do have um after encumbering the money for Barbara Austin's nature walk in June, we still have $972 left in our operating budget. And um, I, the only, I'm really not, uh, other than possibly buying some plants, the th things that will come up at our next meeting, buy, like buying some plants for the, um, for the Girl Scouts uh, pollinator gardens or something like that, we could use up some of the funds. Um, well, the other the other thing that probably will come up is for our work day on the 23rd. Um, yeah. Peter and I, when we did the inventory, we identified some bridge projects that probably should be not be done now um, during yeah. that park day. So we could use some of our regular mm -hmm. budget funds. Yeah. We could expend that on uh, at, at our April meeting um, to purchase some, okay. uh, some boardwalk material and so on that just for that particular day. Right, that's, I, I really in favor of trying to spend down as much as we can of this year's budget um, if, we're, if we're going to be looking for funding from other sources for other things. Yeah. So that sounds good. Any other, and we have, again, we've already had, I believe we'll probably get approval for our 2022-23 budget, right? And then we asked 1500, so after in July, of this year, we're going to start fresh with a whole new budget. Right. New budget. So, yeah. So, Dave, Dave came up with 930, and you could pad that a little bit more if, if needed. That's just a rough estimate as what it would cost for that trimmer. And I believe you still have the, um, the, uh, the email that 
that I sent. So if you needed to go back and check it, that that's the number that he just came up with. Would it, would it make sense just to send, a, a, you know, all authorizations to spend um, are, author, as are maxima, <laughs> the maximum amount you can spend, maybe round it up a little bit uh, just be, because of uncertainties about things like cost of shipping and that kind of stuff. Right. You could even round it up to 1200 just to be on the safe side. Right, because the shipping 11, is free. 11, 11 or 1200 12, 11 12, would. Yeah, yes. I, I, I'd say put it at 12 and then we might be able to buy an extra blade or something that, that right. we could use down the road if, uh, and still stay within, within the authorization. Because you don't know when this free shipping deal expires and you'd, you'd hate to underbid if, if you know what I mean? Yeah. The free shipping deals do not usually go for uh, forever. So am I hearing people say we want to try to, we want to put a motion on the table tonight to put that in for ARPA or do we want to put that in for ARPA at some other point? Put it in now. Sure. Yes. Yeah, okay. let's put it in. Um, but in the meantime, let's see what, what we can find out about, about um, cooperating with um, uh, the road crew um, for storage for the town, with the town public works for storage and that kind of thing. So it would be helpful to be no, able to let's answer just, questions. Just do it. That. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's I'm, I'm saying let's act, do it. It's but, better to act first and then ask for forgiveness than to ask for <laughs> Yeah, I'm just saying, say between now and when we actually go to present it to ARPA, it would be nice to, you know, to, to see if we could tie up some of the loose ends. Um, but do, I would do be we in want favor. To, do, do we want to put in some money for down the road for if we need to replace a good, a substantial portion of our infrastructure that we've got in the parks now? I, I think that would be a good idea. I yes. came up with a rough quick total of uh, replacing all the bridges and boardwalks, all except for the, not or not including the King Post Bridge there, about $7,500. Okay, and that would be to replace all of them? All the bridges, all the boardwalks. Okay. We have a lot of miles of boardwalks and bridges out there. We do. We I do. haven't totaled up the feet. I didn't have a chance to do that. I wanna do that. <laughs> The issue here is, is that we don't want to put that in under this ARPA and then have to buy the lumber and store it for how many years until we need it. Yeah, if you have to, if you have to do that, yeah, it's not like we could put off the, the purchasing then for, for 2020, 2024, 25, then 26, you have to spend it all oh. when you get it. My understanding is that the way I understood it was that we have until they have until 2024 to appropriate that 1.7 million and then up to 2026 to actually spend the money. Um, but so if we put in for funds for the bridges and the boardwalk, obviously we don't have to run out this year and buy everything. We have a few years to buy it and use it. Um, I'd like to suggest, Peter, maybe that we go half that amount, just because I don't know that we'd end up really replacing everything, you know, um, especially within the next few years. And I don't want to have too much money sitting in this pot and then have a lot of pressure for us to have to go and replace everything if we don't have the resources, uh, the manpower to do that. That's, that's my thinking, maybe just cut that in half. Yep. Yeah. How do other people feel? I think that's a reason I think that's reasonable. Because if we have to store it somewhere, first of all, you have to find somebody who has a space at home to do that. And you know, that can always be a liability. I mean, I'm not worried about the liability. But you know, if you had a fire, or I mean, I think the idea of cutting it in half is a reasonable considering that we don't have a, a lot of human power to put it, put all of that board feed out in the in a short amount of time. I, right. I think it's reasonable to to cut it in half. Uh, the other thing is that we've traditionally used a lot of our, our budgetary money at least you know typically anywhere from <laughs> for the parks it ranges from a thousand dollars some years to five hundred. You know, it's, we've spent we spend a lot of our money on the parks, um, and that's a lot of that is in materials, and um, so 
I think uh, it's going to tend to undercut our, our budget requests if, uh, you know, and make it more difficult to, to justify the amount we ask for annually if we put too much into, um, into the, the longer term replacement stuff. Peter, can I ask you, and, and really thank you so much for doing that. I know that takes took a lot of work um, and thank you for your help the other day when we walked around and did the inventory um, that you know we were kind of pushing this hard to get this done quickly. Um, did that include things like screws as well or just the, the wood? Oh, that's the, that's just, just a, a ballpark number thrown in. Yeah, extra stuff like that. By the time any of this gets purchased in a couple of years, the, the, the prices will have gone up significantly anyway. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was I was pricing out like we were thinking for the kiosk, for example, uh, uh, some three quarter inch marine plywood, and uh, which we've used on signs before. Maybe I have, and enough the commission has not. And, and Will had said, "Well, we haven't gotten any of that in since last August." Uh, because she said, maybe it's something to do with the price. It's $210 a sheet. Wow. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's so if we were building a kiosk, we'd have to come up with something else because they, they don't even have it. And it's, uh, and it's very mm -hmm. expensive. So mm. oh, I see, you see the Yukon one, they were just using boards, uh, which is an oh, option boards. we could consider yeah. anyway. Yeah. No, it's under a small roof anyway, so it's not really going to yeah. take the full effects of the weather. No. Yeah. Well, um, do we want to, Peter, how do you feel about that in terms of kind of cutting that back a bit? Because as Carol oh, said, I'm not we, saying we should have spent, we should ask for 7,500. I don't care. I have nothing invested. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just said. It, for, for, for your information, that's the value of, of our infrastructure out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well. if, if it were to be replaced, but in $2,000, that's fine, I would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say so. Well, I think it would be reasonable to ask for, you know, $3,000, $3,500. Um, that would include other things we might need is, you know, updating some of the posts for um, the Taylor Pond Trail, you know, those posts that go in, if there's any rot in those or replacing signage and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, another thing, another thing might be considered and, and maybe that's if the uh, fishing observation dick gets put back in, back in place. But, you know, I think we were kicking around the idea or somebody was at one point that uh, it would be nice to provide handicapped access to that from the parking lot. Um, so, uh, right now, someone out there, uh, it's not accessible to any of the water out there. You know, some kind of pathway, a decent graded, uh, firm pathway with an approach ramp up onto the platform, it may be appreciated by, by some folks. Now, whether that could be another Boy Scout, pro I would think that that might be a, a good Boy Scout, another Eagle Scout project to, mm -hmm. to add on to the first Eagle Scout project at some point. But yeah. Otherwise, and I don't know if we would want to undertake that anyway. Um, I mean, I, really, it should be done professionally, like go in there with a, with a, with a, you know, a bobcat and, and take out the, the surface soil and put down a good solid base that isn't going to wash away and run away. But uh, and that would require some, if we were going to put in ARPA money, we'd have to have a way to estimate that and ask some commercial enterprise what it would cost to put in something like that. It would be nice to have, I think. And you could argue that it's a good idea, and I don't think many people would oppose it. Uh, but it's a matter of the money and who and how. Yeah. Um, well, certainly, that's. I think that's a great project idea. Like you said, we can kind of keep that um in our minds if uh, the eagle scouts come forward some there's also grants that you can get for uh putting in trails and so on i mean there's state matching grants we love those right um, mm. 
Yeah. <laughs> Let's do another. One. I'm sorry. I'm not doing touching any more steak crabs. I've had it my lifetime experience with with steak crabs. <laughs> this year was a particularly difficult year to be applying for anything. I think. So. Let's um, going back to um, infrastructure, bridges and boardwalk materials, uh, building materials. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we request thirty five hundred dollars in ARPA funding for the building and bridges. Excuse me, the um, bridges and boardwalk building materials, and that includes. No. And that includes all of the open space properties. It's not just Benton Ruby. Um, we could use them for, you know, we should put in that we could use them for. Yes, you know, oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. For for the yeah, the for the for the conservation commission managed properties, um, which is, I'm I'm assuming, which is Knowlton. Kathy, are you writing? Time. Are you writing these motions down? Yeah, for? yeah. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'm taking minutes and I'll write it up. Oh, all right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let me let me. I'll, I'll sec. I'll second that, unless someone already has. All in, uh, any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So. <laughs> And the clock agrees too. <laughs> okay, so moved. Are okay. you calling in from London, Peter? Yeah. <laughs> ben, is that you? Where are you? <laughs> Give me three more minutes and you'll hear another one going off next. <laughs> okay, so to recap, we're doing the brush cutter for 1200. Knowlton Talmadge Forest Management Plan for 2,800 and 3,500 for materials for rebuilding of bridges and, and boardwalks. Great, we don't have an actual um, approved motion yet for the brush cutter though. Oh, I thought we- I don't have a, yeah, we, we need to have somebody motion, make a motion on that one. Hmm. Okay, I'll make a, what do you think? Um, People say, does everybody say, well, I'll make a motion that we, we ask for $1,200 for um, brush cutter and associated equipment or associate, what, you know, whatever. That's However, right. we want to worry it to word it. Yeah, you can, you can put the specifics in like general, you know, a walk behind self-propelled. Uh, blah, 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 with, yeah. with extra blades and <laughs> this and that, yeah. With backup camera and uh, lane departure warning. <laughs> okay. Collision. Collision so, okay. <laughs> Who's going to second that, that motion? <laughs> Who's going to second that? Marilyn? I will. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Okay. All right. So we have three items. Uh, 2,800, 1,200, and 3,500. That brings us to 7,500 total. I'm going to put them in as three separate requests. Is there anything else that people wanted to bring up tonight? I don't think so. Okay. Is it the scope of the agenda? No. no. I don't have anything. All right. Oh. Well, um, we're going to adjourn our meeting as of eight oh two. An hours, an hours work, guys. Good job. All right. Right. Thanks, everybody. Good. Thanks for all your hard Good work night. gathering info. Bye. Good night. Bye. -bye. Good night. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs>